Welcome to First Parish in Portland, a member congregation of the Unitarian Universalist Association of Congregations. Welcome to Flower Communion and our annual meeting. So what you're going to do, just as very brief instruction, is at the closing of the service, you will exit. There will be food and libation out there, light lunch for you but you have to re-enter so that we can count members for forming or establishing a quorum. So you have to exit and you have to come back in. Okay, everybody got that? Okay. So 
This is our annual flower communion. And this is a, a communion that has being shared in Unitarian, first Unitarian, then Unitarian Universalist congregations since 1923. And it's a celebration not only of the beauty of the earth, but the unique and permanent beauty of each season of flowers. It's a celebration of the diversity of our congregations and the beauty of all of our blooms from congregation to congregation. This, this ritual honors our weekly coming together to create and sustain a community here. So I think it has special significance this year as we exit a pandemic and think about the reinvigorating of a community of faith. Each of you brings your unique self here each week, like all of the blooms. And that is a visible affirmation, the bouquets and your presence of First Parish in Portland. Each person in this meeting house is represented in these bouquets, the ones that will get processed fours and the ones that are on the table now. There are flowers here that each of you have brought. There are flowers here for anyone who forgot to bring a flower. And there's a flower here for someone who just happened to wander through the doors this morning and has no idea what a flower communion is. Those of you online, I hope that you have a flower in front of you from your garden and you know that you are represented here in our bouquets as well. So we give thanks today for all the generations of human blooms the sacrifices of those who established our heritage and made the waymakers and pathfinders that brought us to this point. We remember the flowers gone by, the crocuses, the forsythias, and we know that there are many people that have passed from our story that we honor with our bouquets today as well. Let us remember with compassion the vision of justice, respect, interdependence and freedom of religion. That is our story and the story of our blooms. I invite you to enjoy the prelude with our choir, the Song of Kabir.
Our opening words were written by Helen Cohen, Summer Warmth. We stand at the edge of summer. Sun has at last warmed us enough that we can begin to trust in its presence. The last burst of spring blossoms, lavender and white, deep pink banks of rhododendron, are giving way to summer peonies and roses. O oh, source of turning seasons, of earth, of life, of promise, gradually becoming fulfillment. May we people find a lightening of the burdens within the brightening of these summer skies. I invite you to rise either in body or spirit and we will sing hymn number 64. Would you be our chalice lighter this morning? May the flames of this chalice that we are about to, lit, to light help us to be always helpful gardeners of the spirit who know without darkness nothing comes to birth as without light nothing flowers. I invite you to join in the words that are printed in your order of service our covenant and chalice lighting words. Love is the doctrine of this church. The quest for truth is its sacrament, and service is our prayer. This is our great covenant, to dwell together in peace, to seek truth in love, and to help one another to the end that all souls shall grow into harmony with the divine. A procession of flowers is invited to bring the blooms forward. Thank you all. And I'm going to invite you to place some on the floor in front of the altar and then make room on the table as you can. 
And then I invite you to sit right here in front because the next thing we're due is going to have a story for y'all. I'm going to do is I'm going to have you look at all these flowers and I am going to share with you that there is no better representation of what Unitarian Universalism is because we are a faith tradition just like lots and lots of other faith traditions and some faith traditions are like this bouquet of roses. So every bloom is very, very similar. People gather together because they believe the same things. They have a very shared creed and theology that informs how they meet together, and it makes them strong. And it's comfortable for people who like to worship with people who believe the same thing exactly as them and remind themselves each week what they believe. There's lots of traditions that are like these bouquets of roses. Some people who practice religion are like this single rose. They're at home right now in their gardens or out on a mountaintop climbing a hill or paddling on the ocean. Their faith comes from their own solitary understanding of what's real and important and they keep faith with what they believe by being a singular individual. Then you get to us. <laughs> we are like all the rest of these bouquets where there's different shapes and colors and scents and see all those different colors down there? So those are Unitarian Universalist congregations. They all look a little different. Some are very traditional like this. Some are very contemporary. Inside them, the only thing that they do, usually that's the same, is light the chalice and put the chalice out, but they say different words. They have different um, types of ministers. Some ministers are Buddhist. Some ministers are Christian. Some UU ministers are agnostics. Some UU ministers are Hindus. And there's all sizes, shapes, and colors of UU ministers. And what holds us together is our principles and purposes. So that is the one thing. And we all join together once a year to make sort of the rules and the policies and set the priorities for our, our whole denomination. And there are UU churches around the world. So we find our beauty by putting different colors and sizes and shapes of flowers into a bouquet. Now, all of these bouquets are beautiful. And what's really important for us is that one type of bouquet is not better than any other. And that everyone gets to choose where they want to set themselves in a unique, multifaceted, different thinking bouquet. A bouquet where everyone shares the same belief or the singular flower. So I wanted you to know that. So a lot of times people say, oh, those Unitarian Universalists, they can believe anything they want. Not true. I am here to set that record straight. We cannot believe whatever we want. What we do is we support each other in finding a faith and believing in something that supports our principles and purposes. So you couldn't have hate be your belief and be a Unitarian Universalist. And there's a lot of other things that we would not invite people to believe. And so, let's all say that together. Unitarian Universalists do not just believe anything. That's for all of you who are reading the book Search that put it in print. So. We Unitarian Universalist ministers agreed we're going to remind everyone every Sunday that you don't go out there and say, we're a church where you can believe whatever you want. Okay. 
Thank you for listening. You've given me good attention. And you now understand that we can't believe anything we, anything we want, right? Not, yes, thank you very much. Okay, you can go join your families or you can stay right here if you want. So that is the story of our Unitarian Universalist bouquet. Reverend Norbert Kapek, also pronounced Chapek, was a gardener. He was a gardener of peace, of building community. He was also head of the Baptist Church in Bohemia in the years that were following the First World War. Reverend Chapek discovered that he began not quite enjoying that bouquet of his where everyone believed the same thing. And he began to embrace a theology and religious convictions which were very, very liberal. And liberal for 1923, way too liberal for the Baptist Convention of which he was a part. So he founded the Unitarian Movement in Czechoslovakia. People who joined him had grown up in other religious traditions and found that their religious needs were changing too. A world war will do that to you. And so they met and, um, and, and sort of the, the, the unifying piece was the presence of Jesus not as a God, not as divine. So they were primarily rejecting the Trinity and adopting a faith that believed in God, but not in Jesus as a God but as a prophet. And they met, they developed their own ceremonies and hymns, and they were part of the, um, this movement in Eastern Europe. Dr. Chepek responded by writing hymns of his own, one of which we are going to sing today, Mother Spirit, Father Spirit. Can you imagine someone saying Mother Spirit, Father Spirit in 1923? Yeah, pretty progressive. And this became one of the most successful ceremonies, um, the flower communion, of all the ones that he had, had, um, had introduced. He introduced this particular ceremony on June 4th, 1923. This was traditionally a day of Christian communion, of bread and wine. And that traditional service was no longer acceptable to this particular congregation because of its um, they had rejected strongly the Catholic faith. So Dr. Chapek turned to the beauty of the countryside. All of the elements of his communion um, would be genuinely received from the community. So people brought flowers from the side of the road. They brought flowers from their gardens. They um, presented them to each other in the um, congregation. and everyone exchanged flowers so that people didn't come in with the same, didn't leave with the same flower that they brought in. They, um, they gathered them in large vases, and it was traditional for the youth of the congregation over the years that they developed this to bring the flowers to symbolize that the youth were the foundation of their congregation and the hope for the future. The young attendants helped with the arrangements of the bouquets, and later they carried them to the front of the church where they would be placed, and Dr. Kapek would say a prayer, which we are going to do, and consecrate the flowers. After the service, the people left the church and took a flower from the vase that they, um, from the vase that they had not brought. And the significance of the flower communion for those people was that no two flowers are alike, just as no two people are alike. Each one is a contribution and brings its own beauty to offer to the congregation. Together, the different flowers make a beautiful bouquet. So today, what we're going to do, I'm going to invite you once we have shared the blessing of the flowers. Oh, first, um, the, the flower communion was brought to the United States in 1940 by Dr. Chapek's wife and she brought them to the uh, Unitarian Universalist Church. It was both Unitarian and Universalist before we originally um, merged in 1961 in First Parish in Cambridge, Massachusetts. And from the beginning of the service of that particular church, it spread across the nation. 
and it was adopted along the way by the Unitarian Universalist Association as an official communion along with water communion, celebrated in almost all of our Unitarian Universalist churches. It became a, um, a ritual to bind not only the people in the congregation with each other, but to bind our different congregations to one another. So it's very symbolic in terms of our association of covenanted congregations, where we covenant to affirm the principles and purposes of our faith. So after we join in the responsive blessing that's in your order of service, I'm going to invite all of you who are able to process up, and we're going to put the flowers where you can pick whichever flower you want. Because the vases are heavy, and I always worry when youth are carrying the vases around to the pews, especially when there's dividers, that someone will either end up with a lot of water and a lot of flowers on their lap, or youth will trip and hurt themselves. So we're gonna invite you to come up as you are able. Those who prefer to stay in their pews, then we will bring a vase to you. And you will all get to hold that flower through the rest of the service. And as you gaze on the flower, and as you think about which flower you choose, I would like you to look at all the sizes and shapes and colors. I'd like to imagine your contributions to this congregation. Think about which bloom best represents your spirit, your contributions. Are you a budding rose? Are you a fancy peony? Perhaps a mountainside lupin? Are you bright orange? Or are you more subtle and white? So. Think about, and not only what you have already contributed just by being here, I also want you to think about this next year, where we are going to be thinking about the future of this congregation. I want you to think what unique qualities can you bring to our re-engagement, our re-envisioning, the choice of a new settled minister that will walk with you and share with you for years to come. So all those things I want you to be thinking, and Matthew will be playing Spirit of Life as you come up so you can take your time. There'll be no hurry, and there are plenty of blooms for everyone. So with this exchange of flowers today, we are going to honor our willingness to walk together in the search for truth, regardless of all that might divide us. We're going to bring that willingness into our annual meeting as we look at things as mundane as a budget, but as essential as a budget. Each person will take home a flower brought here by someone else, demonstrating our shared celebration and support of each other. Sharing is essential for free and liberal faith and to sustain a free religious tradition. So I invite you now to find your orders of service and the insert, and we're going to read the blessing of the flowers. I will say what's in lowercase. You will respond. Oops, nope. You're the italics. I'm the non-italics. <laughs> right. <laughs> Thank you. I better make sure I've got the right words on my paper, too. OK. In the name of the providence which implants in the heart of the seed the future of the flower, and which implants in our hearts the unrest which will not be quenched till people live lovingly with each other, we bless these flowers. In the name of the prophets and sages who sacrificed their lives to hasten the coming of the reign of mutual respect, we bless these flowers. And I will remember next year to change that to siblings in spirit. So, yes, thank you. 
May these flowers be for us the sign of the glory and variety to which we aspire, knowing the whole while that we are one family, the family of spirit and nature. Now I invite you to rise in body or spirit and we'll sing Dr. Chapek's hymn, Mother Spirit, Father Spirit, which is number eight in your hymnals. Now I invite you, let's see, I'm going to ask Carl and Angus to help me just move those flowers so everybody can get around the microphones. And then you can form lines um, on this side, on that side, and down the middle.
And you can also remember that you were lighting candles this week for the person that you have a hard time appreciating from last week, remember? Or a, doesn't have to be a person. Did I get a flower to everyone who did not come up to get a flower? Is there anyone who still does not have a flower? You have a flower. No. You need a flower. I need a flower. Is that another flower? Oh, I'm going to reveal a lot now. I wanted to also remind you that this congregation has a very special connection to the original flower communion because the altar cloth was embroidered by Maya Chapek. So I, I, when I saw that here, I was like, wow, that's really special. So now please hold up your bloom and we will join together in the responsive reading. And what I'd like to do is have this side say, speak to this side and this side speak to that side and I will speak all of the words with all of you. So left of the congregation reads italics and that's your left. So this side, this left, this is right. Correct? You can tell I'm challenged on some things. But the important things I usually get straight. So, italics, italics, that's why I'm reading them all. Flowers speak to us of joy. Flowers give us hope when life begins anew in spring. May hope begin anew each spring in your heart. Flowers stand for sharing. May we share together the beauty of the flowers. Flowers send a message of sympathy. May we feel sympathy for others. Flowers tell of friendship. May our friendships be everlasting. Flowers speak of love. May we love one another. We will now receive the offering of the financial contributions that you give to this congregation. All of your contributions, flowers, money, talent, are what create and sustain a vibrant community. And it is wonderful to see so many of you here this morning to join in our decision making and in worship. Thank you. And Una Voce is going to sing a blessing to us.
Thank you. And before we share our closing words, we're having an abbreviated service today so we can gather again for the annual meeting. But I want to invite either Hannah or Lori, are there any special instructions that you are going to need to give us in terms of which doors and where food, et cetera, et cetera? Thank you. Also about quorum and membership, et cetera, et cetera. Good morning. Thank you. I hope you will all stay for the annual meeting. This is such, I don't know if this is on. I'll just be loud. <laughs> Good morning. I'm so glad that you're all here this morning. It's just great to see everyone. And I hope that everyone will stay for the annual meeting. This is a super important and really special um, part of being a member of First Parish. We make all the decisions. You make all the decisions. So uh, the governing board and the leadership really values your input. In order to do that, we need to have a quorum. We have 334 members, which is fantastic. Um, a quorum by the bylaws is 20%. So. We need 67 people to participate, but we of course would love to have more than that. Um, in order to do that, we will be taking attendance or, or checking people off, checking people in. We'll hold the meeting here in the meeting house, and we'd ask everyone to exit, actually empty the meeting house so that we can get things set up, and um, exit into the parish house. There are light snacks, a few sandwiches, and some coffee in the parish house garden, and then come back through these doors. Hannah and I will sit here and uh, check members' office as you come in and give you a little voting flag that you can hold up to signify your decision um, for any questions, the budget, and some other important decisions that are going to be discussed this morning. How about the people online, Lori? Uh, people online, if you are uh, participating online, and we would love to have members participate online through Zoom, you can go to the church website, and there's a bar that says uh, participate in the annual meeting here, and just click on that, and then it will come through as a regular Zoom meeting. We'll need people on Zoom to put in their name, and if there are more than one if there is more than one person uh, watching together, we will need the name of each person that is watching, so you are each counted. Um, so that's a different Zoom link than the live streaming, so you have to exit the live streaming, correct? Yes, So it is. exit the live streaming, and then find the Zoom link and enter the Zoom room. Yes, yes. And um, members that are participating online will vote by raising their hand, uh, and I will be watching um, your little squares and do a physical physical tally, and then we will add up the in-house numbers and the online numbers to get the final final vote. And uh, you can raise your hand literally, or you can push that little reaction button on your Zoom uh, account that says you've raised your hand. Yep. Uh, I also just want to invite any friends or visitors to, that you are also always welcome to participate as a, as a viewer in our annual meeting. Um, the only difference is that you can't vote, but we're happy to uh, be open to share our process with you so that you can learn more about what uh, this church, what First Parish is about. Thank you, Laurie. Thank you. 
So now we'll share our closing words and we'll extinguish our chalice, but I want to, with these words, remind you that the sharing in our business meeting is just as sacred a part of our religious tradition as worship is. And your voices and participation in that are actually a fulfillment of everything we share during worship. Yes, pride. Some of you are going to Washington, D.C. and will be there with me and doing the Poor People's Campaign. Those who are here in Portland are invited to come to worship service here at 10 a.m. on Saturday for pride. The parade is at 1 o'clock, and you'll be given instructions following the service where to meet and gather for the pride parade. We'll be joining with other Unitarian Universalist congregations in Maine who will also be coming, hopefully, to our worship, and we'll all meet here, and then we will, you will meet here. I will be in Washington. Thank you. Saturday, the 18th. There is a service at 10 o'clock on Saturday and at 10 o'clock on Sunday. So... I know, a two-service weekend. Yes. And these are our closing words. They were written by Reverend Dr. Chapek. Flowers unfold slowly and gently, bit by bit, in sunshine. A soul, too, must never be pushed or driven, but unfolds in its own perfect timing to reveal its true wonder and beauty. Our work is to be gardeners of souls, wherever, whoever we are. Everywhere, seeds are beginning to germinate. Let us tend them with the greatest of care. They are tender and delicate. Let, her, let us water them with love. So may it be. Amen and blessed be. Carl, would you be our extinguisher? Please, thank you. Please join in the unison extinguishing of the chalice words printed in your order of service. We extinguish this flame, but not the light of truth, the warmth of community, or the fire of commitment. These we carry in our hearts until we are together again momentarily. Thank you all.
Yep. Check, check. One, two.